What is up guys and thanks for tuning in to Vitamin D TV. I'm Vitamin D and today we're going to be showing you our new boat. So this may not be a brand new boat but it is new to me. Uh, I told you guys in the last video uh, that we acquired the boat and we went ahead and started cleaning up on the boat. So now that the boat's all cleaned it's only right that we start working on this boat and making it a solid and safe vessel so we can get out there and fish those bigger waters and make sure that we can get out there and get back safe. So, if you guys got some time, we're gonna be going over the quirks and some of the things that need to be repaired on the boat. And I'm gonna take you guys along the whole entire journey of acquiring this boat for getting it ready for fishing adventures. So, I'm gonna be carrying you guys with me just like always, my family. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Hey, if you got some time, grab a drink, grab a seat, and let's go work on this boat, let's go. All right guys, so again, we did get this boat all cleaned up the last time that we showed it to you. All right, so it's clean. Now we need to do some work on it, okay? So just to go over the specs, this is a 2005 21 foot Sea Fox, okay? And uh, it is center console, as you can see. It has a Suzuki 154 stroke on the back, which is probably the main thing that we need to work on. So most anglers know most boat anglers know that a boat is absolutely nothing unless you got a good motor on there so uh, we will be touching on the motor and uh, seeing if we can figure out what's wrong with it and then there's some other things we're going to play with as well just to kind of make sure we can get this guy solid right so uh, the main thing i want to focus on today is this boat motor so the owner told me that um, the 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 boat runs and, and it, it, it performs well, right? But he was out there on the water and the last time he was out there on the water, it started blinking a check engine light, right? So uh, he got it back home and he pulled the spark plugs out of it. When he pulled one of the spark plugs, he had a little bit of water on the spark plug and that indicates a number of things, right? It's either a head gasket, uh, a, a cracked cylinder or some kind of corrosion in the engine, or it could just be a bad water pump and somehow water's getting into the cylinder right so uh, we do need to look at all those things I'm not a boat mechanic at all but I am mechanically inclined enough to know uh, how to pull spark plugs out how to check to see if you're running rich running stoich or running lean uh, as well as many other things but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lower this engine down and we're gonna take the cowl off so that we can access those spark plugs and the coil packs, get those out of the way and see what we're looking at. So uh, let's go ahead and get started and uh, I'm gonna be showing you guys the whole entire process. So let's go. All right, so I got the Prius loaded down with a few things. My toolbox, which has all my tools in it. And uh, we got some extension cords as well as this charger right here to get those batteries right right so we can be cranking on that guy while we're doing a compression test we're going to try and do a compression test on this guy i just got to find my compression tester and then here we got some some cool swag that was sent to us i ordered some stuff and uh, our guy cooper thor over at waterland co sent us some stuff that uh we were kind of behind on so they sent me a pair of shades and uh, i got some t-shirts and some hats that I'm gonna be rocking on those fishing adventures. And uh, if you guys want, you can save yourself 15% by using promo code VITAMIND15. And uh, yeah, save yourself some money on some really cool stuff. And while we're talking about it, I'll go ahead and tell you guys, you notice that I'm wearing some different fishing optics right now. These are the new bed fishers, guys. These are the brand new line and series of fishing optics that Waterland makes. These guys are like massive and they have excellent coverage over here on the side so that you can get really good penetration through the water. Now, uh, a lot of the fishing shades that I've been wearing, the fishing optics that I've been wearing, fishing for a long time, some of the best brands, um, I still find myself doing this, putting my hands on the side of my face, trying to block out a lot of that ambient light that's coming in. These guys, 
you're not gonna have to do that anymore with. When Cooper showed me that they were coming out with these and I checked them out, I told him I was already excited about these guys because I understood what the whole purpose of these bed fishers are. They're for blocking out as much light as possible so that you can get a good clear visual of light penetration and your vision. You can get a good eye for what you're looking at through the water because there's, there's little to no light penetration coming through on the sides of these, these optics, right? So uh, they're really big and for those serious anglers, you're probably gonna really, really appreciate these fishing glasses, let me tell you, because uh, you got a huge lens here and you also have the polarization technology factor that Waterland uses and then you have that uh, side shield for uh, light penetration. So, man, if you guys want some good optics, be sure to check out waterlandco.com and use my promo code vitamin D15 to save yourself 15% at checkout. It makes a difference if you guys like saving money. But let's get back to this boat. All right, guys, as you can see, we have hooked up the battery charger for this guy. Um, here recently, I cranked the motor up and I heard that, that starter getting weaker and weaker. So uh, we did have to hook the charger up to it just to get some juices flowing back through this girl and uh, we, we are going to be doing some turning of the motor once we start that compression test and uh, we're going to have to build up that compression and then let that thing sit on there for a minute to see if that pressure slowly falls off and if it falls off fast that means we either got a blown head gasket or a leaky cylinder and neither one of those are good but we'll figure out where to go from there but uh, one thing at a time Let's reach down inside of here. We got our power switch. We're just gonna go ahead and turn that power to on. Power it to all, actually. And that'll give us access to all of our functions and those switches up there and our controls, as well as being able to turn that key on and off to get this baby started. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the engine down. I'm gonna try and do all this as fast as possible and try not to make it too long of a video for you guys. But we're gonna lower that engine down from the towing stance that it's in. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pull the cowl off and we'll show you guys what she looks like underneath. Let's go. All right, let's make our way up this ladder. Climb inside. And we got our key. That guy right there. Flip it to on. All right. Then. We can come back down. All right. Flip this little tab up. The motor wasn't sitting on there all the way, but then we'll come on down with her. All right. That baby is pretty much touching the ground, but now we'll just unlatch these guys. It's got three of them. Then the last one's up front over here. All right, she's unhooked. Let's see if we can take this baby off. All right, guys, looking at it, it looks pretty clean under there. I'm, I'm actually impressed. And honestly, when you're looking at a motor like this for the first time, you want to look and see if it had been taken care of, right? So sometimes you get a lot of salt water in these guys. And what you want to do is look for corrosion in certain places. Now here's where that head gasket is. And it looks to be sealed pretty good. I'm not sure how old that, that guy is, but it looks to be sealed pretty good. There's a little bit of corrosion on some of these parts right here. Um, not really sure. But looking down inside... It's just really kind of hard to tell. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab my tools and then we're going to come around to this side. So this thing is a three cylinder. No, it's a four cylinder. So it's a four cylinder, four stroke. And these are the coil packs. And these are what provide the power to the spark plugs in order to create that spark, right? So every time that engine rotates and computer tells it all what to do these coil packs in the electro 
electric charge to it and it gets that spark plug firing so that it can spark off that fuel and then it combusts inside of that cylinder and then you get the power to the to the prop right so uh, enough talk let's grab our tools and let's remove these coil packs and get this little shroud right here out of the way all right got my tool set right here i've had that since i was like 18 years old i'm 38 now but anyways uh, as you guys knew from my last boat uh, i got it and it had some stumbling problems it wouldn't rev out and i had to figure out why right so uh, we only had that boat for about a year or so and then i had to let it go but we're here now and we're going to do the same steps that we did with that last boat um, we're going to go ahead and remove these coil packs first thing we're going to do is go ahead and unplug each and every one of these right and we're not going to get them out of order the harness keeps them exactly where they need to be anyways All right then once you get them unplugged we'll hit each one of these bolts they look like a 10 millimeter and we'll pull those coil packs out of there inspect those little guys and then the main things we're looking for are the spark plugs underneath so let's do that yep 10 mil hopefully it doesn't start raining on us gotta love that florida weather Now we're going to take our extension and our 5.8 and we're going to remove the spark plugs out of here. A little snug. The first spark plug looks perfect. Looks perfect. second spark plug looks perfect and when i say perfect it's got a nice brownish tint to it with a little bit of black from carbon burning off that fuel all right number three's got some rust on it it's got a little bit of rust on there which means that there's been water coming into this cylinder but it's burning nearly perfect it's a little more clean than the other two which is probably from that water getting on there so uh, cylinder three is probably our problem cylinder we'll show you guys a comparison in the spark plugs in a second whoa all right lots of moisture on this guy that is not good at all i mean this thing is wet to the touch i'm gonna show you guys these spark plugs all right guys looking at these as you can see this is cylinder one it's nice and brown it looks pretty good all right it's burning about stoich maybe a little bit rich moving on to cylinder two cylinder two is also running stoich and uh, it's cleaner than cylinder one. Then you move on to cylinder three. Cylinder three has some rust around the rim there and that electrode, the white part, is turning white. Now, when you see the, when you see the electrode turning white like that, that means that uh, you might have some moisture on your, your, your electrode or moisture coming into the cylinder and the rust is a dead giveaway that there is moisture coming in and out of there and then we move on to cylinder number four this spark plug was completely soaked all the way down the threads right there guys as well as you got rust on the rim again and that electrode is white so that tells us that there's a lot of moisture and a lot of water probably getting into that cylinder and it's just not good so I'm thinking either we got a cracked block or a cracked cylinder and uh, potentially a blown head gasket. All right, guys, so seeing what I see now with the spark plugs and everything, it looks like we either have a leaky head gasket around cylinder three and four. Uh, it's probably worse on cylinder four, or we have a crack 
that is allowing water to get in from cylinders three and four. So uh, we either need a head gasket or we may need a whole new engine. Um, but I feel like, I feel like honestly, we can get this guy going, uh, whether or not we have to replace the whole entire motor um, or if we can actually get a new head or do whatever we need to do to ensure that we can fix the head gasket. Let me show you something. So this is the head gasket right here, this little tab. That tab is there so you can lay that gasket on there. And uh, it looks like they got some type of sealant on here as well. So somebody may have been inside of this motor before. There's a little bit of corrosion right there on the edges. You know, that's all common stuff. It looks like somebody may have tried to do a patch job and uh, use some type of head gasket sealer and try to spare this head gasket job and make it seal a little bit better. Um, sometimes that stuff works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can shoot yourself in the foot with all the work that you've done and then you add something to a head gasket to make it not do its original intention and do its original job. So um, I think it could be just a head gasket. That's just me personally. Um, I think we're going to have to take the boat to somebody, let a professional look at it, let them diagnose it, and then uh, after that, they'll give me a price on everything, how much it's all going to cost, and then I'll decide if I want to follow through with the work. Um, I am going to tinker with this guy a little bit more. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to turn the engine over a few times and see if any water comes out of either three or four down here, because if it's that much water then it's probably a bigger problem than what i'm thinking um typically engines boat engines boat motors whenever you have them sitting here they still have either fresh water from when you flushed it or it has a little bit of salt water still inside of it from where you didn't flush it good enough and that's what causes the corrosion and things around all these parts and stuff you got to make sure you're flushing these motors good guys because salt water is a killer of boat motors um, but yeah, we're going to turn this thing over and then I'm going to see if I can find my compression tester and I'm going to test each one of these cylinders and see just how fast we're losing compression on these cylinders. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But I do think a professional is going to have to look at it. I'm no professional. I do know how to work on motors though. Uh, more specifically car engines and whatnot. So, uh, I'm going to tinker around here some more, um, guys. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. The channel is constantly growing and we got some awesome, awesome adventures coming for you guys. And I do want to carry you guys along the whole entire way. All right. So uh, I'm not going to hold you guys up too much longer. Uh, hey, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And when you hit that like button, just know that it helps the channel out tremendously. It helps us reach a new audience and we can grow with new family members. So I appreciate you guys. And uh, I thank the Lord up above for all the opportunities that he's presenting me with and he's providing for me and my family. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in that next one. All right. I'm Vitamin D for Vitamin D TV. We got a lot of work ahead of us and a journey to go on. So we'll see y'all in that next one. I'm Vitamin D for Vitamin D TV and I'm out. Peace.